All right, and we are live. Woo. Good morning, everyone. How is everybody? Hey, Jeanette, how you doing? Good morning. How are you? Fantastic. You sound good. This Ela sound so much better. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Hi, Jeanette. I hope you had a great weekend. Ditto. Thank you. So you want to kick us off? Are you you ready for me to go? I will I will go ahead and kick us off. Um, good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Um, it's so great to see so many of your bright and shining faces, um, profile picture or otherwise. And so um, we are going to be continuing. Hi, Janet. Uh, we are going to be continuing um, a trend of topics that we have been talking about for quite some time now, everything AI, but specifically as it relates to real estate and specifically as it relates to lead generation. So we've got D in the room with us today. And so he's going to be talking about the best ways to leverage AI specifically for um getting leads, working your CRMs, things like that. And so without further ado, I will let him take over. All right. I've got you. Got the mic. Rocking the mic. Hey, everybody. So um, I have a quick question. Who right now uh, in the room is actually utilizing AI uh, as a marketing tool in your real estate business? I am. Okay. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing right now as far as AI? Not a whole lot, but I'm using Gemini. Okay. To, um, nice tool. Right. We're starting yeah, to see yeah. that AI is integrated in all of our browsers. And um, there's so many tools that are out there that, you know, a AI came on like a storm. Um, at, but, you know, as we discussed last week, AI has actually been around for a long time. Obviously, not as sophisticated as it is right now. Um, but it's been around for a long time. It started in the 50s uh, and kind of evolved. And in the 70s, there was really no um, viable application. So AI was shelved for a long time. It wasn't heavily researched, any of that. Um, saw a small resurgence in the early 90s. And then certainly once we got into the late 90s in the 2000s and beyond, uh, it took on like a storm. Um, you know, we see AI in our daily functions, things like Amazon Alexa and Google, um, Google, whatever Google is. Hey, Google, uh, you know, Siri, uh, all, all these kinds of things that we utilize AI for. But AI has been around for a long time. Chat GPT um, has been around for almost eight years. Um, but we're just now starting to integrate these products and we're starting to see um, the viability of AI for everyday applications and beyond. So, you know, it's important to understand what AI is and how does it really affect modern real estate. As you know, we've been in a state of flux, a state of change for an awfully long time, but more specifically and more recently as a result of all the NAR activity um, that's changed the culture and the um, design of the business of the real estate industry. So, how do so understanding AI in modern real estate is critical to your business. Last week we talked about if you're if you haven't embraced AI yet, you might as well hang up your shingle. Um, only because it's something that's not going away. It's not a fad. I'll tell you this factually: in 1998-ish, as we were all transitioning to everybody's got a personal computer at home and the internet, which was T1s and dial-ups and things like that. And we still had the AOI, AOL, <laughs> you've got mail. We, you guys remember that? We still had all that. And people were thinking it was a fad. People thought the internet would not last. The information of all things would not last. Uh, I knew agents who didn't get emails until 2011. That's an awfully long time to hang back from an email. My customers are old school. Those kinds of languages existed, right? But what is AI? So AI encompasses machine learning, predictive analytics, um, artificial um, language processing. Um, it essentially uses computers um, uh, to do tasks that need human intelligence, like learning from data and making decisions. That's what we've all done in our business for a long time. We wear multiple hats, right? We're our marketers. We are our 
Uh, we are our promoters. We are the ones who conduct our business. We are our own financial network, all these kinds of things. But now you've got these tools that literally will take some of the heavy lift off of your business. So what is predictive analytic? Predictive analytics um, uses data to pr predict the uh, future outcomes. Um, we absolutely need that. I'm going to talk a bit about how that actually leverages into lead gen. Um, again, the benefits of AI, it makes your work easier. It helps you to reach the right people and it, in, it increases your chances of making a sale, right? We're all fallible. We've all got lots of things on our plate. We all burn out. We all, uh, feel overwhelmed, you know, and we feel joy when we get business into play, right? So that's what today is all about. So when we talk about utilizing the tools um, that will help you in AI, we've been dealing with CRMs for a long time. But as I started off, uh, AI has integrated into just about every facet of our existence right now. AI is, you know, essentially our best buddy. You know, it's a person by now, even though it's not a real person. So some of the platforms that we leverage on a daily basis um, are things like HubSpot. Um, HubSpot uses AI to analyze lead behavior and automate marketing tasks, right? That's one thing we want all the time. Um, a lot of you have been using drip campaigns in your businesses for, you know, years, some of you longer than years, some of you decades. But um, as you look at a drip campaign, even though a drip campaign is automated, it's still very manual. Um, you know, you've got to go in and adjust the settings and sometimes those settings are imperfect. And then you begin to flood your customer base with lots and lots of, of uh, properties or information that may not necessarily be deemed useful to that particular person. It, it's more akin to spam. Um, AI and predictive analytics and the use of um, artificial language can actually help to automate in a more perfected way to where it's really specifically designed for that particular customer versus a larger group. Um, Zillow also, sorry about that. Um, Zillow also uses AI. Um, Zillow has AI tools and they leverage data to predict the market trends and property values. I think most of us know by now, even though we all say, you know, uh, customers contact a realtor, customers actually go online before they ever contact a realtor. And their uh, site of choice nine times out of 10 or not quite that high, but Zillow, you know, they utilize Zillow a lot. They utilize realtor.com a lot. Um, but, you know, Zillow is fairly ubiquitous in many people's property searches um, initially before they ever contact an agent. So Zillow has baked in a certain tools that, uh, you know, give an opportunity to predict what the market is, market trends are, um, where property values are headed. Now, we're in an election cycle. Um, we're in an election cycle and we're coming into seasonality, meaning summer. Um, so that what that means as a whole is historically in an election year, in a election cycle, real estate is always favorable. Unfortunately, we're in the midst of, um, how should I frame this? Because I don't want to get political. We've got a sea of imperfect candidates, right? You know, folks who may have been convicted of certain things and some candidates whose family may have been charged and convicted with certain things, things like that. So where I'm going with that is, you know, the American public is um, confused as to what next steps may look like, right? Is it going to be the incumbent? Is it going to be um, someone else who, you know, may have some popularity? And so that's leaving some uncertainty, some, un, uh, some doubt um, in terms of the real estate space. But uh, as I was, I was talking yesterday about, we've seen new listings, at least in the state of California, increase at a rate of about 755 per day, somewhere in that range. That's still well below um, what's needed to accommodate all of the home seekers out there. Um, roughly 11% of all Californians can afford to buy. So that narrows the market. So it's even more imperative that your tool selection be very precise because you're going to have some very demanding clients as we roll forward. And we've now reached that season, uh, that seasonality um, timeframe, which we look forward to every year, which is summer. 
Some are the reason why kids are out of school, uh, parents have more flexibility, more time. Um, there are more opportunities that open up because people have the freedom to move about without disrupting lives and daily schedules. So Zillow makes adjustments for some of these tools. So some of you guys may be leveraging that already. KB Core, which, you know, again, another one of our in-house products, KB Core helps find leads. It sends those automated messages. It, it, allow, it tracks your interactions with your customers. Um, if you're not using the CRM, um, you're doing more work than is necessary. Uh, CRMs are great tools. They always have been for organizing and collecting data and organizing our reach outs to our customer base, um, tracking the timelines, um, working with our A customers versus our C customers, things like that. But with AI, it's just kind of ramped up how we interact with our customer base. Um, it allows us to um, set detailed responses over time to where we're not having to think about things in real time. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we start to talk about automation. So where is this data, this mythical data coming from that we input into our CRMs? Most of us have a bank of people that we know, right? Anytime we're reaching out to a customer or to family and friends, it's not about our past customer. It's not about our family because a lot of us know we we know our families and members of our families can't afford to buy. Heck, they could barely afford to buy a cup of milk, let alone a house, right? But it's not about them. It's about the people that they know. So we're leveraging their knowledge of other individuals and putting those people in our databases. That's how we grow our database. That's how we grow our pipeline. Some of it's past business. Some of it's folks that we want to do business with. Some of it is um, in a more detailed structure, like a farm of a neighborhood, things like that. But we want to dump all that data into our CRM. We want it to be useful for us to where we can actually mine that data in an effective way to where we can leverage the output. Um, we're getting uh, data from social media. All of you, I think, at this point in your lives are utilizing social media as a way of getting yourselves out there. Um, realtors, many realtors have all but abandoned old school traditional methods uh, like door knocking, making phone calls, things like that in favor of a more active and articulate system like social media. Social media still has a long way to go before it catches on as a truly viable real estate tool, in my opinion, only because we're still leveraging some aspects of social media incorrectly, which is, you know, you know, keep the the entire meaning of social media in mind, which is the social, right? It's the, you know, people join social media to learn about what other people are doing. Many of us just use it solely for a business tool, which is a bad sales experience. And that's often use it incorrectly. We think we're doing a great thing by putting out our business ideas, but the reality is we've got people all over the world vomiting on another realtor, not a lot of more realtor that. So we're we're trying to adjust that and social, me um, social media, I, uh, AI can help with that. So combining all your data in one place and tools like Ylopo, K KV Core, that gives you a full picture, a full breadth of who your clients are and what their specific needs are, right? That's stuff we don't want to carry around in our heads. That's a lot of work on a daily basis. But uh, AI can actually help us um, to generate response, create emails, um, do the follow-up, all those good things. So, um, you know, all these things exist right now. So we talked a bit about uh, predictive, uh, predictive analytics. It uses that data that we were just talking about to predict future outcomes. We can kind of see where a potential buyer may be trending or what's even more popular or more powerful is we can predict if you've got a farm or at least predictive analytics can, what the sales, um, what the sales tail may look like. In other words, when is, when, when are listings going to happen in a particular neighborhood based on past data, right? So that's how we leverage predictive analytics is we make it work for us. We may have a farm, we input the data from that farm, 
it'll analyze the trends of that neighborhood as it analyzes the trends of that neighborhood it also gives us valuable data on the back end that says based on what i've calculated there should be five new listings in this neighborhood and it'll even narrow it down to say it may be this house this house this house that way we're more hyper targeted when we're reaching out to our farm neighborhoods a uh, quick aside where are we time wise Quick aside, how many of you are um, utilizing farms in your day-to-day uh, -day business? Farm is another one of those old school tools, but still very effective if you're talking about uh, where my business is coming from. So how many of you are still um, using farms or have incorporated a farm into your uh, lead structure? I just got one last week. You just got one, excellent. Right. I mean, that's that's what we want it to do. We want that farm to kind of pay dividends over time because a farm a farm is exactly as it sounds. Think of if you were a produce farmer. Right. You've got to uh, till the soil. You've got to nourish the soil. You've got to water the soil. Then you plant the seeds. And as you plant the seeds, we're looking for that bounty or that yield that uh, the soil brings, which is what's called a crop or fruit. That's the same as a real estate farm, right? A real estate farm, we're, we're cultivating that neighborhood. We're getting our face out there. We're being hyper-present and top of mind so that when people are making decisions to uh, either buy or sell, you're the first face they come to because they're so used to seeing you, right? What does that involve? That involves heavy marketing campaigns, either direct mail campaigns or other aspects predictive analytics can help with that it helps to hyper target some of the behaviors that we already do so that you can see a better result or a better outcome for your efforts right it's all about the roi the return on your investment we don't want to spend a bunch of money only to come up short so that's where predictive analytics can actually help out right and then how do we track this data what's what are the tools we use to track this data? Again, another one of our native tools, which is KV Core, it uses machine learning to prioritize the leads so that we can focus on the best ones. All of you are familiar with how we categorize leads or what we call lead scoring, right? We've got A, B, and C, one, two, and three, however you want to, hot, warm, cold, however you want to label it. But the hot leads are the ones that are going to buy within a month or so. And the warm leads, are gonna buy within three months. And the cold leads may be six months and out, right? We we wanna focus on the people that are the most viable to transact business with you now versus in the future. So it, it consolidates your effort versus us chasing everything in hopes of something sticking, right? So lead scoring is a way of ranking your leads based on how likely they'll become a client today. And that's, that hasn't really changed uh, in historically. It's just the tools that we leverage that you know creates a better outcome. We're always wanting to rank our customer base so that we can focus our efforts. Again, guys, it's about working smart, not hard. You know, we we put a lot of effort in because many of us are used to um, a former job environment where we got paid um, based on the time we put into the job. And we know that real estate is about the performance that we put into the job. So we want to really um, uh, execute on the performance aspect. Okay. Uh, so we can also leverage AI for personalized marketing. And I'm sure I'm not telling you guys anything new, right? Some of you are doing small aspects of this already. But uh, again, because AI is humanized in a way it literally uses data from so many sources you know it's it's an infinite amount of sources that uh ai depending on the tool you are using is leveraging like chat gpt it's pulling from everything you know keep in mind it's the data that we input into ai it's just like I mean, google didn't exist two and a half decades ago so it's like now google is the thing it's ubiquitous with you know, let me search. We we uh, affectionately say, let me Google it, right? It's become nomenclature in popular culture. Um, you know, that's how powerful, how big Google is. And that's what AI does, is AI essentially is that repository for all information everywhere. And, but it acts like a human and it analyzes that data 
word becomes useful now. So how do we look at that analyzed data when we talk about creating targeted email campaigns and ads, right? Many of us struggle with how do I get my best face forward? In other words, how do I get myself out there to my general population, my um, my sphere of influence, my, uh, my farm, uh, the folks in my social media trees? How do I get my best face forward? In other words, be casual, but be business serious at the same time. Does that make sense to everybody, casual and business serious? Nobody wants you to be business person 24-7. Nobody. As I said earlier, you were just vomiting information, and it's like going to a party, and somebody just starts talking about their job, and you're like, yeah, that's really interesting. I'm going to go get a drink. See ya, right? We don't want that. We want it to be interactive because we know that real estate is about developing relationships. That's the business we're actually in is relationship creation business. But there is that sales aspect, which is, hey, when you're ready, you know, I can do these things for you. So how do you meld those two ideas together and blend them to where they work effectively and create strong and targeted email campaigns and ads that say you are that person who fulfills these buckets, right? We know that we can incorporate our lifestyle in all of our marketing because that's going to attract people. We are all like-minded individuals, right? People do what's called habituating the sameness. And what that means is we gravitate to people who are like us, who are similar to us, who have similar hobbies. It's not about race. It's not about gender. It's not about any of those things. It's about lifestyle. And does that lifestyle match and align with the things that I believe in and who I am. So as realtors, we're con that's the tool that we actually sell is us. We're constantly leveraging who we are so that people recognize, you know, that they can align with us and that you've got their best interest in mind. AI can help with that. Um, there are tools like AdWorks that help to target ads based on their online behavior. Um, you guys have all seen these, um, mid-level registration pages or trackers that follow the things that you do, your activity online, those are really calculated algorithms that basically say, let me know this person's buying behavior so I can send this person targeted ads specifically based on the sites they've shopped on and things like that. You know, so sometimes you may be thinking all of a sudden, you know, I, I wanted to buy a new lawnmower and it just popped up on my uh, on my feed, well, it's not by accident. It's not magic. It's because it's it's tracking behavior that actually looks at what are the things you're doing. Right? We feel like being on online is anonymous because we're usually by ourselves, either on a laptop or a desktop in a room with not very many people around. You know, so it feels like a very personal experience. But because uh, the world has changed and every site we visit, you know, we often input our information in what's called mid-level registration pages so that we can see more data on a particular site. And that just simply means we're putting our name and email, name and phone number. Sometimes we do it because it offers us a 10% discount or 20% discount or something like that. If, you know, if we decide to buy, you know, that information is stored. So um, tools like AdWorks helps to target people based on their online behavior. Boomtown does some very similar things to that as well. Um, you know, again, and I'll talk about privacy in a minute, but those are things that literally are game changers in this world of um, online presence, right? Again, I mentioned we do very little, if at all, things like door knocking, which used to exist. You know, this is back in the day when people still had landlines. I'm not saying I'm old. I'm just saying this is what people did, right? So, you know, we were doing these door knocking campaigns, all that kind of stuff, which is still a viable tool, but just not utilized very, uh, very much. Um, other things that can help as you're looking at leveraging AI for your business and lead generating. Most of you are not up and awake 24-7, right? You know, I know some of you want to be or think you could be, but you're not. You know, as a broker, I know people think I'm up 24-7. I get questions asked of me at midnight because someone else is up at midnight. But guess what? I'm not, right? So I usually will respond to those things the next day because I'm already out. I'm already snoozing and snoring, right? Uh, I don't snore. It's just a joke. I really don't. But um, chatbots are those things 
that help us to engage in our clients and their behavior, right? Our chat bot's a 24 seven uh, assistant, right? It can answer questions, it can set appointments. Again, some of those mid-level registration pages do, the, do these things. Some of you have your websites adjusted to where it may have a chat feature like, hey, Jeanette, what are you looking for, right? It pops up, okay, Jazz, thanks for jumping in. Uh, it may it may uh, pop up uh, as you know you know how can I assist you? That's your chat bot, and that gives your user or the customer on the other side an opportunity to interact with what it believes to be um, a component of you. And theoretically, it is a component of you because uh, you know you've designed your chat bot to where it's capturing information to assist potential customers in order to do business with you. Right. Every time somebody want, visits our site, we don't want to lose them. I mean, it, it, it was all that work to get them there to begin with. And now we want to make sure they stay there. So chat bots or virtual assistants are those things that allow us to be present when we're really not a component of us, an analog of us to be present when we're really not. OK, they engage your clients in a 24 seven fashion. Um, you know, and again, they communicate with text messages and lead generation tools and things like that. Okay. Um, I talked earlier, and all of this involves automation, right? Automation is not new, but it's definitely enhanced now with AI. Um, being able to automate an email that is specific to somebody, you know, not just a group or not just a very general response. It can, you know, with chat bots and other predictive tools and language models, we can actually create emails and messages and some that aren't generated by us. In other words, we don't have a bank of them stored. AI itself will begin to um, understand the behavior of that customer and generate messaging as if it were us so that the client feels touched. So in internet world, um, you know, it, well, let me, let me back up for a second. You guys can respond in the chat. What is the maximum amount of, a maximum, maximum amount of time you have to respond to a lead in internet world? Put it in the chat. I'm just curious as to what you guys think. Maximum amount of time. Somebody hits your site. They may hit your uh, you contact information. They say, hey, I'm curious about property 1234 Main Street. What's the maximum amount of time you have to respond? And even this is too long. Anybody? You guys are shy. This my Janet said 30 minutes. Anybody else? All right. We're going to use Janet's 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes is way too long. Way too long, right? Way too long. 15 minutes is the standard, but even 15 minutes these days is way too strong. You realistically have about three minutes because if you think about it, think about online behavior. We want immediate results. That's the world we live in. We want an answer now. I wanted an answer before I was even done typing, which is why you see that predictive typing that happens, right? It's actually understanding the question that we're asking. And so it now generates a response because we want immediate results. That's the world we live in. With, um, with that being said, you, you know, knowing that you have about three minutes maximum and even less, if you think about it, a consumer is already looking at multiple sites when it asks you that question because it's looking for that immediate response. And this is where automation tools like HubSpot really help in terms of understanding that lead behavior. Your website may be linked to a HubSpot account or another uh, vendor or provider account to where now your chat box are you know, looking at, okay, this question was asked, I can answer this question that way that consumer feels more comfortable in staying on your site because my needs were met. I now feel validated that I got what I needed. So the likelihood of that uh, interaction continuing becomes greater and greater and greater. When we, you know, hey, I saw that you contacted me yesterday, they've already forgotten about you. They've already moved on from you because they've hit a site or a person 
somewhere else that was able to fill what their immediate request was. Make sense? All right. So social media, that word gets, or that phrase gets bandied about so often, right? Um, when we talk about social media um, and its efficacy and how do we make it viable for our day-to-day -day lead generation in our real estate businesses, social media has to be monitored. Again, we can't be everywhere all at once, right? We've got lives to conduct. We've got business to conduct. We're out with our customer base sometimes. We're out with our family and friends sometimes. Sometimes we're just unplugged, right? But social media can be monitored by AI. It can help to find leads by watching uh, real estate related posts and provide and engage in that. We were just talking about um, uh, tools like Hootsuite. Uh, Hootsuite Insights help to monitor social media and trends and engagement of your customer base. Again, we can't be 24 seven, but we are a, an internet of all things. We are hyper-connected in our lives these days. I relish the day when uh, you used to be able to uh, ignore someone because they called you, but you didn't have a phone in your pocket. So it's just like, hey, I called you, I left you a message, uh, you know, great. Now people know that you're blowing them off because it's like, I know you got a phone on you. Everybody on the planet practically has a device or some sort of um, way of being contacted 24 seven. So we can't hide from anybody anymore. So that's kind of the concept around social media listing, listing, listening <laughs> with the, the use of AI is it literally monitors your AI sites um, so that it knows when someone wants to engage with you and it provides engagement via responses um, so that, again, as I said earlier, it's not like you um, can respond the next day. They're looking for immediate engagement. So uh, social media listening um, through AI helps with that kind of behavior. So when we talk about, you know, tying all of this together, right, what is, you know, what is the concerns of AI and how is it impacting uh, our day-to-day -day lives and more specifically our privacy? I'm going to say this, this is a personal opinion that I'm providing right now. So I'm giving that disclaimer, which is privacy is all but dead, guys. If you If you actually think that anything you do is private anymore, in my opinion, um, you may be off track, right? Uh, we try and ensure uh, privacy when it comes to things like your data, like your social security uh, information and your drive and your uh, banking information and things like that. But uh, it's very hard to uh, protect privacy these days because we pick and choose what we want to share, but we know that those little bits and bytes that we've inputted, um, that go into an online database or the cloud or whatever, just because we pick and choose where it's going doesn't mean that it's not stored in something that we no longer have access to and no longer have control over, right? So uh, we do our best ethically to ensure data privacy and follow the regulations like the California Consumer Privacy Act, the U.S. Privacy Act of 1974, the HIPAA, which is Health Insurance Privacy and Portability, the COPA Act, and the Graham Leach Bliley Act. Um, we want to be transparent as possible to our customer base. We want to be clear with our clients about how their data is used or if we're using their data for other things, right? You know, people are concerned. That's why uh, we have things like opt in, opt out right now, so that um, we can technically turn off someone's data so that. Uh, or even how we contact them so that it's it's not used in a nefarious manner, okay? So to summarize uh, everything that we've talked about this morning, how do we get started? We want to first decide what we want to achieve, how we want uh, AI to utilize and assist us in um, how we generate business for our customer base. Um, we want to make sure that we're picking the right tools uh, for um, what our intended purpose is. And our intended purpose is always to get new business.
but we want to get new business in a very ethical and uh, concise way. We want to be able to input all of the data in one common source to where um, it can be utilized effectively. Um, it can uh, help to drive our AI tools to where it's giving us the correct data and giving the correct data. And we want to teach our team how to utilize these tools. Uh, we want to, you know, make sure we're keeping track of these results as they come in so that um, we can make improvements or adjustments um, to the tools that we're using. And that's kind of the end of my presentation. Anybody have any questions? Let's go with the Q&A. Give me one second. Miranda, anybody have questions? All righty. If no que anybody have any comments that they want to add? I was just going to add a couple of um, AI tools to do, like maybe like your smart targeting or your. Um, there's one called Revaluate, which is really good for like knowing the analytics of like who may or may not sell by. Right. I, I've heard of Revaluate. Have you used it? I have. It, and it's you, pretty spot on. It's pretty what? Pretty spot on. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, That's those are exactly the kind of tools we want to leverage, those ones that can actually help our businesses function more effectively and easier. So... Other questions, guys, other ads? Awesome. Well, as always, I appreciate you guys taking some time out to participate in uh, in these kinds of learning sessions, and I appreciate the shares that you guys have. Uh, stay tuned. As, as Ela was saying earlier, this is an ongoing topic that we will be uh, doing month over month you know, and especially as we all get more sophisticated in the world of AI. Uh, let me grant you guys back some time. I appreciate everybody's participation, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye.